Hey everybody, Craig Moser here. I uh, hope you're having a good uh, April, uh, May <laughs> and uh, wanted to update you some on what ha what's happening in the markets. Um, having fun yet? <laughs> I guess is a question for you. It's, it's been quite an interesting uh, first quarter and the second quarter you know, has been uh, equally as volatile. So one, let's dig into some charts and uh, have, have a little bit of a conversation. First thing, before I get started, let's look at one thing. So the balance sheet of the S&P 500, and I just showed you the 2014, and now right here is where COVID hit. This is the stock market right here, this blue line. And then right here is where capital creation happened. We were actually starting to pay down some of that debt during uh, 18 and 19 and first part of 20. All of a sudden when COVID hit, we had to create some funds and then we created a whole bunch. I mean like four some trillion dollars off of what we were at. We were at maybe 4.2 and then we went to 7.2 and now we're probably 8.9 trillion dollars on the balance sheet because this one stops in 2020. What I'm trying to get you to is the stock market rallied uh, a lot because we created money, not because there was a whole lot of good stuff going on. And now we pay the consequences for some of the things that we've um, done. I mean, was it wrong to do that? In my opinion, that was the only thing they could do. So I'm not trying to take this and, and make light of it and say, oh, they shouldn't have done it. But what I am saying is, as we look at the world today, we have high inflation. You don't need me to tell you that. But, you know, the stock market is going to react the way that um, capital creation is, is, is going about. So we're not printing any money right now. We have a lot of higher cost. Um, we have some supply chain issues. Uh, people are going back to work. There seems to be a lot of money out there, but some things just have changed. So right here is the first of the year, right here on this line, the first tradable day, 1-3-2022. So the stock market had a, had a nice little rally uh, coming into the end of the year. We ended up, I don't know, somewhere around 47.96-ish, somewhere like that, almost 48 on the S&P. Today, we're at 3991 as I talk, and what has happened is we have declined about 17%, plus or minus, depending on where you measure from, okay? 15 to 17% decline in the broad market, which is actually the S&P 500. So as we're talking about the S&P, this takes in a lot of our technology stocks, the, the, the FANG stocks, and this takes in a lot of the more conservative dividend paying stocks. But nonetheless, it takes in a broad swatch, if you will, of, of um, our, our economic and st stock market. So let's look at the Dow Jones. Now the Dow Jones is down about 12 and change, 12% not quite as bad. Why, you might ask? Well, there's not a whole lot of tech in the Dow Jones. There are more conservative stocks. The market weighting is set up different on this average than it is on the S&P 500, which is definitely market weighted. <clears throat> so it hasn't taken the, the type of hit, although we're only 5% 5, 5 difference uh, that the S&P has and especially hasn't taken the hit that the NASDAQ has taken. So here's your NASDAQ look, and we're down, you know, we're down quite a bit in NASDAQ, you know, 25 to 27% down. So the market's not giving us a whole lot of, of good stuff right now. So if we measure from, sorry, I gotta grab this little blue guy here. If we measure from first of the year, which I didn't do, uh, down about 26 ish. So what, I'm, what you're seeing is not that these companies are, are having big problems, not that there's a, an economic crash coming, but that the, the economic stimulus, and again, this is my opinion, drove the value of these stocks up way past where they should be, and they're correcting. So I don't see market crashes yet. I don't see end of the world Armageddon, but you can see that was two years worth of run right there where we're the NASDAQ peaked in November 
And then money managers wisely started selling off some of this high price stuff because now, you know, they're not taking 26% declines. So you probably saw a lot of that in your portfolios where, wow, I had some capital gains. That's why they took these profits right in here rather than put up with this. Okay. So I'm just saying. All right. Before we say, oh, bad stock market here, maybe if we look over the pond and say, what about Europe, Australia, Canada? What about that type of index? And look at that. Well, 18% ish down uh, from the first of the year. So once again, uh, a, a beneficiary of economic stimulus, maybe not as much as here, but then the decline has started and you're seeing lower highs as we walk through this. You're seeing lower lows, which indicate a, a sell-off. Doesn't indicate a crash because if you look back to the COVID, that was a crash. 30% in 30 days is a pretty big hit. Let's look at emerging markets. Now, that's a nice way of saying the big three, Russia, India, China. So since the first of the year down 17, but that sector of the world has really declined from its market high, which was up here around um, a year ago, February of 2021, we're down about 30% from the high that we were in, 29, 30%, somewhere in that range. So what you're seeing is markets that are selling off due to uh, the impact of what I, I will call COVID. COVID impact a lot of things. It put people out of work. It created a lot of money in the economic system, which stimulated it up. But now we have to pay the price. And, and here's some of the price. Now, I want you to think about what you believe as, a, as an investor. Uh, for the last 30 years of my career, uh, bonds have been a safe haven. Bonds have been a place that we could uh, go to when the markets were giving us sell-offs like we're seeing right now. And when I mean the markets, I'm talking about the stock markets. All right, so what has happened is over the years, they have dropped interest rates continually over that period of time. So 2020, basically, you didn't make anything on your money markets. You might have made 0.01%, but you didn't make any real money. And, and so there's no place for those rates to go up unless they go negative. Uh, there's no place for them to go but back up. So the Federal Reserve is raising interest rates, trying to curb inflation. When that incur occurs, the bond market that we're in has already issued the bonds. The bonds are out there and they already pay an interest rate, which is lower than what the new rates are. So the price adjusts down so that the interest rates will reflect current, I mean, the, the price of the bonds and the interest rates that they will pay uh, reflect uh, current interest rates. I, I hope I confused you. I think I confused myself there, but, but let me just show you the reality of it. The, the, index that everybody uses for the bond market is used to be the Lehman Brothers bond aggregate. You heard it every day on the news. Well, Lehman Brothers went kapow in 08. So now it's the Barclays bond aggregate. Same thing, but the ag has been dropping down. And right here, you can see the cliff it fell off of. The bond market's down 10 or 11% in price. There's nothing wrong with the bonds. They're not at, in jeopardy of failing to pay us. But what has happened is as the anticipation of interest rate hikes has occurred, the price of the bonds has adjusted down to give us a, a yield that more approximates what the newer rates are. So this is the core bond aggregate, what we're looking at today. This is sort of the whole shebang, high yields, treasuries, and corporates, all kind of crammed into one place. If we wanna isolate some because you say, well, Treasuries might be safer. Here's a 20-year treasury. A 20-year treasury is down about 20%. Why, you say? Because these maturities are really long. A long maturity bond already has all those interest rates locked in, so they're just not going to help us much on the interest rate scale. And if you look back over the last two years, which is what this chart here is looking at, you can see the impact of what's what's happened to bonds since the, the, the last most recent recent high in the last two years, which was 2020. You know, the bond market's down 33%. Who knew? 
Well, that's not a safe haven for you right now. When rates finally stop going up and we're just getting started with it, when they stop raising rates, what you're going to find is that we're able, that what we're seeing here is that now all of a sudden with the rates much higher, we'll be able to lock in some things that make some sense. All right, so let's look at, well, maybe I'll run over to the oil patch. Not too bad. Oil over the last two years has gone up in price. Now, this isn't actually the price of oil, but this is a, a way to buy it if you wanted to buy something like a ETF. So here's the first of the year, and oil's up about, I don't know, what is that, 30 40%. It's up a lot because they raised the price of oil. You can see where they bought the living daylights out of it right in here. So as that price went up, you know, that affects you at the pump. That affects you uh, at the food market because the guy that's hauling it has to pay a higher price for diesel. That's what's happening. So oil with its increase, not helping us one bit right now. If you own it, you can make a few bucks or if you own something like um, you know, Chevron or something like that, it has gone up some. But believe me when I tell you, it impact, it, this impacts you in the wallet. That's where it hurts you. Uh, gold, same sort of idea. Gold's kind of bouncing around a little bit. As you look at what's happening with gold, you can see we had some spikes back in um, 2020. Okay, we had a, a, a spike in gold. And most recently, we had a spike in gold right here, which was uh, the 8th of March. But really, it's just not, not, not something that you can say, hey, I'm going to go and, and convert all of my money into gold because I'm afraid because the value is not really giving you anything. You get no yield on dividend. So those are things that you got to pay attention to. Should you own some gold? fine. It's, it's usually a hedge against inflation, but you can see over the last two years really hadn't been a whole much, whole bunch going on with the gold world. And then, um, so what else could we look at there? Anyhow, what I'm trying to get you to is things are selling off a little bit. So if you're trying to say, okay, where do I put money for safety? Well, money market's a nice place. Um, when you look, say, for example, at high dividend stocks, now, these are stocks these aren't tech stocks. These aren't small cap stocks. These are the bigger names that have a substantial dividend. You can see money has flowed into that area. They're not getting clobbered over there. This is paying about a three and a quarter yield. It's not a bad idea. Something in this vein, Caterpillars and British Tobaccos and those types of things, 3M. Not very exciting companies, but more stable balance sheets and longer term track records and enough money to be able to distribute a dividend and still have a profit, those kinds of guys. You know, if you look at TIPS bonds, so a TIP is, an, is a treasury bond that doesn't look so good. So let's look at the short term. Like I said, when you look at short term uh, treasury bonds, these are better choices. And you go, well, it's going down. It's not going down a whole lot. I mean, it's going down some. But again, I'm, I'm trying to help you to see the difference between that, say, and the bond aggregate. So there's, there's the actual bond market right here. These are the TIPS bonds. So they're holding up pretty well. If you do the short terms and you pick up a, a substantial yield, about five and, and three quarters. So again, we're trying to move into less volatile spaces, make sure that our money has a defensive posture and just, just prepare for a period of, of uh, volatility. That's what I think you should do. Don't try to trade this bottom because the bottom continues to give us more bottom, I guess is the way to say it. If you look at the S&P as an example, um, right there's your S&P, but the other side of it is it's moving down. The, when you look at the bond market, not as much as the S&P, when you look at the TIPS bonds, the Treasury Inflation Protected Securities, the least volatile of the three, that gives you a way to look at, okay, where's the volatility? Where's the safest play? So those are things that I hope I've helped you with a little bit. And that's where we're shifting um, in, in our portfolios. So uh, I, hope, I hope you have a good May. I'll talk to you next month, and hopefully things will have started to level out a little bit. Take care, be safe, and we'll talk to you in June.
By the way, if you need us, you can give us a call 336-448-1086.